Oh yeah, sorry for those technical difficulties. So the following list are the foundations that offer early uh, career awards on an annual basis. And as you can see, there are quite a few. And there's a subset of these that we're going to talk about today that have the deadlines over the summer months. But I wanted to share this list because there are other opportunities throughout the year with these foundations for early career awards. So just some general information about these foundation awards and competitions. For the most part, their focus is on science, engineering, and medical research. There are a few, uh, and we'll highlight some of those today, that target the humanities, education, and the social sciences. But for the most part, we're looking at science, engineering, and medical research. All of them typically have very specific eligibility requirements, and I encourage you, if you are interested in applying, to really review those eligibility requirements thoroughly because they are quite important. And uh, we'll talk about some of the highlights of those in each of the opportunities that we'll be discussing today. They also have very specific application procedures. Uh, again, uh, always review those application procedures thoroughly as you're uh, thinking about moving forward with one of these opportunities. I would also suggest that you look at some of the past awardees and the grants that were awarded in previous years. Most of these foundation websites have abstracts or more detailed information about the awards that were awarded in previous years. This will give you, I think, invaluable insight into the types of projects that the foundation is interested in supporting with these awards. The other thing you need to know is that these awards are extremely competitive. They're not easy to get, um, but if we do get them, they're very prestigious. Uh, so I would encourage you, if you, if you do uh, fit the, the guidelines and, and the eligibility requirements and you have a project that matches their requirements, please go ahead and try to apply because if we do get one, uh, they are extremely uh, prestigious, not only for you as a faculty member, but for the university as well. The other thing is they all have expert review panels that evaluate these proposals. So for the most part, it's not just foundation staff that are looking at these proposals and making that determination as to who moves forward for potential funding to their board of trustees. The foundation staff typically will do maybe an administrative review of the proposals to make sure everything is in order with the grant proposal itself and all the attachments and everything are there. But the actual review would be probably done by uh, uh, peers. And often these are institutionally limited and require nomination by the institution. I believe there are three over the summer that are institutionally limited, which we will talk about. The others are not. Those that are not institutionally limited, uh, you are free to move forward and apply to those. You do not need uh, any approval from my office to do that. You would just move through the regular process of submitting a proposal uh, at MSU, the transmittal process, and, and so forth. So if one of the opportunities is institutionally limited, those are coordinated out of the Office of the Vice President for Research and Graduate Studies. And there's a link to uh, the procedure on how to apply uh, on the screen and uh, you'll get these slides following the presentation. So generally the procedure is that um, the VP's office will uh, put the announcements for these institutionally limited uh, opportunities on their website. And they will include an internal deadline for that opportunity. These internal deadlines are for you to prepare a, a brief pre-proposal. This would be an internal pre-proposal that would be required for each of these limited submission uh, opportunities. And these would be electronically submitted to uh, limited at msu.edu. These pre-proposals are then reviewed uh, by an ad hoc review committee here in the VP's office. And this committee will make a recommendation to uh, the vice president regarding which applications are allowed to go forward. So um, again, these institutionally limited, um, if they are limited mostly to one per institution, uh, it's extremely important for you to follow this process rather than uh, try to submit uh, uh, on your own. Once the determination is made as to who uh, is moving forward with the particular opportunity, uh, the PIs, the chairs, and the deans will be notified. And uh, PIs of, of approved proposals are required to confirm intent to submit a full proposal by sending an email, again, to limited at msu.edu within two working days. 
And if we don't hear back from you within those two days, the committee will recommend a new candidate. And then once the confirmation is received, uh, the candidates not selected will be notified and uh, the VP's office will also inform the candidates selected to submit their full proposals. And the Office of Sponsor Programs will be notified as well. So the opportunities we're looking at today are uh, opportunities that have deadlines between May through September of this year. And the deadlines could be a deadline for a, an initial letter of inquiry or a deadline for an actual application. As many of these, these opportunities have various ways of applying. Uh, some have a two-part process where they want an initial letter of inquiry or pre-proposal uh, that would be reviewed and then you would be invited to submit a full proposal. Others just have you submit the application uh, initially and, and uh, they review that and get back to you. So what I'd like to do is very briefly run through, I think I have maybe 13 or 14 here, very briefly run through these and just give you some highlights. Again, this is a very high level overview and I really encourage you to look at the actual detailed RFPs on the website of each of these proposals and at the bottom of each of these uh, opportunity slides, I provided you with the, uh, uh, the link to the website and, and the uh, opportunity. So the first one is the Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation, uh, the Beckman Young Investigator Awards. The focus here is on the chemical and the life sciences. These awards uh, provide research support to promising young faculty members in early stages of their academic careers in the chemical and life sciences. Particularly interested in the invention of methods, instruments, and materials that will open up new avenues of research in the sciences. As far as eligibility, uh, this opportunity is open to uh, those with the uh, three years of a tenure track position or an equivalent in an academic uh, institution that conducts research in the chemical and the life sciences. Funding level is $750,000 over four years. It is not institutionally limited. And the Beckman Foundation has not issued a specific deadline dates for this opportunity yet, but uh, they typically have the LOIs due in August and then the pre-proposal the following January. So again, I will check back on the website uh, within the next uh, month, a uh, couple weeks to a month, and, and see if they've issued the actual deadlines for this opportunity. The Beckman Foundation also offers the Arnold O. Beckman Postdoctoral Fellows Award, again in the chemical and the life sciences. This uh, is a, a transition award. It supports uh, postdoctoral scholars with uh, high potential for success in independent academic careers in chemistry and the life sciences uh, as they transition from mentored yet independent postdoctoral projects to an independent tenure track position. And the foundation is looking for these individuals to really become next generation of leaders and innovators in science, engineering, and technology. Eligibility here, at the time of application, applicants uh, with more than 36 months of postdoctoral experience in a research lab or uh, more than five years from their PhD are not eligible to apply. Funding level varies between $63,300 and $77,000 based on the years of postdoctoral research experience, and this is for a two-year appointment. And there is a possibility of renewal for a third and final year, depending on outcome of the uh, second year. It's not institutionally limited. And again, Beckman has not issued the uh, actual deadlines for this, but the proposals are typically due in September. Burroughs Welcome Fund has quite a few opportunities throughout the year, uh, two of which are uh, coming due in uh, over the summer months. The career awards at the scientific interface, the focus here is on the interface between the physical and computational sciences and the biological sciences. Uh, they're looking to foster the early career development of researchers who have transitioned or are transitioning from undergraduate or graduate work into the physical, mathematical, or computational sciences or engineering into postdoctoral work in the biological sciences and or pursuing a career in academic research. Again, a transition award. Candidates must have completed at least 12 months, but no more than 48 months of postdoctoral research by the date of the full invited proposal, and must have at least one first author publication. The funding level on this one is $500,000 over five years. It is not institutionally limited. Uh, this requires a pre-proposal, which is due September 6th, 
And if invited, an actual proposal would be due January 10th of 2018. The other borough's welcome opportunity over the summer is the investigators in the pathogenesis of infectious disease. Uh, this provides support to investigators at the assistant professor level to study pathogenesis with a focus on the interplay between human and microbial biology uh, to shed light on how human and microbial systems are affected by their encounters. And uh, IDOC candidates here are uh, accomplished investigators at the mid to late assistant professor level with an established record of independent research in a tenure track position or its well supported equivalent in a non tenure offering department. Funding level again is 500,000 over five years. It is not institutionally limited and requires a pre proposal due July 14th with a proposal if invited uh, due November 15th. For those doing cancer research, uh, the Concern Foundation has what they call the Conquer Cancer Now Award. Um, this provides support to young uh, innovative researchers focused on cancer genetics, cancer cell biology, or cancer immunology. Uh, candidates should be independent investigators who are at the start of their scientific career uh, and are at the level of assistant professor. It's a relatively small amount, $60,000 uh, per year for a maximum of two years. Uh, second year of funding is not guaranteed, but is based on uh, evidence of sufficient progress during the uh, uh, first year and the required progress reports. Uh, not institutionally limited. Um, again, this uh, opportunity has not specified a specific deadlines. LOIs are typically due in September, however. The Foundation for Child Development Young Scholars Program focuses on uh, the early care and education workforce and its impact on young children's growth and development across the birth through age eight continuum. Um, this supports policy and practice relevant research focused on the early learning and development needs of the nation's children who are growing up under conditions of economic insecurity and social exclusion. Uh, eligibility here is that researchers must have received their doctoral degrees within one to eight years of application submission, uh, 10 years for physician applicants. And a minimum of one year must have elapsed since receiving uh, your degrees before the researchers may apply. There's two funding levels here, 225,000. Um, there's a typo there that should be 225,000 over two to three years for research projects involving primary data collection or a combination of primary data collection and secondary data analysis, or the lower level of $180,000 over two to three years for research projects focused solely on secondary data collection. Not institutionally limited. Letter of intent is due June 5th, and a proposal would be due October 10th. The William T. Grant Scholars Program uh, is focused on social, behavioral, and the health sciences supporting uh, early career researchers in social, behavioral, and health sciences whose studies will tackle important questions to advance theory, policy, and practice for youth ages 5 to 25 in the United States. Uh, they are not interested in international work on this one, uh, so it's totally focused on the U.S. Candidates must have received their terminal degree within seven years of submitting their application and must hold a tenure-track position. This one is institutionally limited uh, in that applicants must be nominated by their institutions and uh, we can have one candidate from each major division of the university, that would be each college. So we could have one applicant from social science, we could have one from education, um, we could not have more than one from either of those. The internal deadline uh, for the VP's office on this one is May 18th and the proposal would be due July 6th. The Keck Foundation, um, the Science and Engineering and Medical Research Program Awards. This is a very interesting foundation, has a very convoluted process, uh, application process. Its focus areas are on the biological sciences, the physical sciences, and engineering. And they're supporting research projects that are distinctive and novel in their approach, that question the prevailing paradigm, or have the potential to break open new territory in their field the research projects must fall outside the mission of public funding sources. That's very important. Um, the, this foundation puts a high priority on projects that have been submitted to a federal agency and have been declined. 
So in order to move forward with this, um, you really should be looking at a project that you had submitted to NIH or NSF or DARPA or any other, other federal agencies. It's been declined because what Keck will want to see are some of the reviewers' comments on why uh, the proposal was declined by a federal agency. If we're not able to provide that, it's highly unlikely uh, that your proposal would move forward with, with Keck. So I'd like to point that out up front because that is an area where we typically have some challenges with the Keck Foundation on proposals that, that go out. So the two criteria that I really want to stress here, it has to be a project that really falls outside the area of, 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 of public funding sources. And it should have been a project that had been submitted to one of those sources and been declined. This is the funding level, excuse me, on this is $2 million or less over three years. Average grants over the last few years have been around 1 million. It is institutionally limited. Uh, MSU is uh, allowed to nominate uh, two applications, one for the science and engineering program and one for the medical research program. Uh, the internal uh, VP's deadline on this is May 12th. Now, as I mentioned in, in the outset of the conversation on Keck, it's a very convoluted process. So once uh, we determine who will be moving forward uh, with the application, the next step is for the PI to develop a one-page concept paper based on the format that's provided by the foundation. Um, this needs to be submitted to the foundation through my office, um, the Foundation Relations Office, by June 23rd of this year. After that, uh, we would set up a phone consultation. The phone consultation period is between July 1st and August 15th. And this phone consultation does not involve the PI. The Keck Foundation does not want the PI included on this consultation. It is a conversation between the relevant program officer and the vice president for research. So it would be Steve Hsu, uh, Doug Gage would most likely be involved in this, and I would be involved in it. And it, would, it is for the program officer to give preliminary feedback on the concept paper and provide some uh, advice if, uh, and give us the okay to move on to a phase one application. So it's a very critical component in which we're able to get some, uh, some really good uh, feedback from the program officer on what we would need to do to put together a competitive phase one application. If we do get the go ahead on that, then the PI would develop the phase one application based on the form that CAC provides. It's a very uh, easy form to, to complete at the phase one level. Uh, and then that would need to be submitted by November 1st. That is reviewed, and then if that uh, is reviewed favorably, we would be invited to submit a phase two proposal in February uh, of next year. So a very long, drawn out and convoluted process, um, but I, I wanted to spend some time going over this one because it, it does have a lot of uh, nuances to it. Research Corporation for Science Advancement offers the Cottrell Scholar Award on an annual basis. This is a focus area of astronomy, chemistry, and physics, uh, providing discretionary research funding for uh, early career teacher scholars in, in these three uh, disciplines. For the 2017 proposal cycle, eligibility is limited to faculty members who started their first tenure track appointment anytime in calendar year 2014. Funding level here is $100,000 over three years. Uh, not institutionally limited, and pre-proposals are due May 1st, it's right around the corner, and a proposal uh, July 19th. Um, another cancer research award, uh, the Damon Runyon Cancer Research Foundation. Uh, Damon Runyon, again, offers a number of awards throughout the year. This one is, is due over the summer months. Uh, again, the focus is on cancer, supporting uh, postdoctoral scientists as they embark upon their research careers. Candidates must apply for the fellowship under the guidance of a sponsor. Uh, so you need a mentor, senior uh, uh, level faculty uh, uh, mentor for application to this one. Um, amount is 231,000 over four years, not institutionally limited with an application deadline of August 15th. And just a few more, the Cyril Scholars Program 
This uh, supports discipline areas of uh, biochemistry, cell biology, genetics, immunology, neuroscience, pharmacology, and related areas in chemistry, medicine, and the biological sciences. The support here is for uh, outstanding early career scientists who have recently been appointed as assistant professors on a tenure track appointment. And applicants should have begun their appointment as an independent investigator at the assistant professor level on or after uh, July 1st of 2016. It is institutionally limited. Uh, we are invited to nominate one faculty member per year on this one. Uh, the internal uh, VP's deadline is August 11th with the application due September 29th. The Sloan Research Fellowships are focused on chemistry, computational or evolutionary molecular biology, computer science, economics, mathematics, neuroscience, ocean sciences, physics, or related field. And they're seeking to stimulate fundamental research by early career scientists and scholars of outstanding promise. Eligibility is uh, candidates must, uh, uh, most recent PhD must have been awarded on or after September 1st, 2011. And the tenure track faculty positions at candidates institutions must include a yearly teaching requirement. That's very important for this award. Uh, the level of funding is 60,000 over two years, not institutionally limited, but we can do no more than three applicants from the same department. The deadline on this one is September 15th. Uh, a policy award offered by the Smith Richardson Foundation um, is focused on foreign policy, international relations, international security, military policy, and diplomatic and military history. And this supports junior or adjunct faculty, research associates, and postdocs uh, who are working in uh, policy relevant research and writing to enable the recipients to research and write a book and only single author of book projects are considered. $60,000 funding level, not institutionally limited, with a deadline of June 23rd. And I believe this is the last award we'll be talking about today. This is from the Thrasher Research Fund. It's their early career award focused on pediatric, re pediatric research and children's health. It's encouraging the development of medical research in child health by awarding small grants to new researchers helping them get a foothold in this area. Uh, the goal is to fund applicants who will go on to be independent investigators. And again, this one is under the guidance of a mentor. And postdoctoral researchers who receive the doctoral level degree no more than three years prior to the date of submission uh, of the concept paper are eligible. The award is, is I'm sorry, $25,000 over two years. Concept papers are due September 19th and proposals are due November 3rd. So with that, I'd like to uh, turn it back to uh, uh, our, our colleague to talk more about uh, some of the services that her off office can offer. Thank you. Hi, excuse me, how do I? How do I um, slide? Okay, um, hello, I'm uh, Shobha Ramanand um, in the Office of the Vice President Research and Graduate Studies and part of the Office of Research Facilitation and Dissemination. Um, I want to uh, talk a little bit about some of the services which we offer as part of our uh, ORFD and VPRGS. Our service mission is uh, the research facilitation and dissemination team. Uh, um, myself uh, and uh, Lauren Ernie Flesner provide a grant writing guidance and support for all MSU faculty departments and colleges. Um, who do we assist? Our services are available at no cost to faculty, colleges, or, depart or departments. So anybody and everybody uh, who would like to uh, get assistance on grant writing or um, trying to find out about what possible grants you could apply to, 
um, or you know, uh, get uh, uh, funding opportunities, emails from us are uh, welcome to um, contact us. Um, you know, if you visit our website, which is restfacil at msu.edu, uh, you have more information about the types of services we provide. So ORFD services, which we provide are guidance on proposal development and writing, editing and formatting, uh, assistance with budgets and budget justifications, even the new KC system. So um, uh, we can help you with uh, uh, budget development and putting budgets into the new KC system. Uh, proposal coordination, especially with collaborative proposal within the university, different colleges, or with different other universities, we could do the project management, help collect um, um, material like, um, you know, um, um, biosketches, uh, conflicts of interest, and all of those, and then sort of, you know, collate them and help you with uh, putting them into the grants.gov package and stuff like that. Uh, we also do data collection and mining. A lot of uh, uh, grant proposals which um, are training grants or grants which are looking um, at uh, human resource uh, or workforce development, um, especially uh, with student data, we can help you collect some of those because, uh, for example, a lot of the NIH and NSF grants, uh, which uh, are looking at, um, um, you know, fellowship development and student uh, associated thing require data such as um, applicant data, enrollment data and stuff like that. Uh, we can help you uh, collect those type of data. We also have, uh, because we've helped a number of proposals over um, the last few years, we have a lot of uh, proposal templates, so we can help you with writing management plans, evaluation plans, MSU institutional capacities, um, especially the types of uh, resources MSU has in terms of labs, uh, um, computational services, et cetera, which a lot of NIH proposals require. Uh, we already have a lot of them on file and we can compile them, uh, those same material for you. We also have helped in a lot of uh, postdoc mentoring plans, data management plans, um, resource sharing plans, and also with letters of support you might need from the vice president researcher's office, the provost's office, or the president's office, uh, we can help you. Uh, not only we have a number of letters of support on file, we can help you um, write them and get those uh, signatures for you. Also with any other supplementary documentation and material you might need. Then how do you, I mean, the question is, how do you receive award or grant writing assistance from our office? Uh, contact us at 517-432-4499 uh, to set up an appointment to discuss your research project, your timeline, and how ORFT can uh, support your grant writing efforts. As I said, um, our team, uh, grant writing team consists of myself, uh, Shobha Ramanan, and Lauren Ernie Flesner. So with that, um, uh, uh, we can, um, we'd like to ask the audience uh, to email questions to Melanie Kaufman. Uh, we'll post answers to questions on our website. Is there anything else? Um, are we taking any questions now? Um, if you have any questions, please email them to Melanie Kaufman or you can also email them to Shobha Ramanand or to me, Lauren Ernie Flesner, and we will take those questions and we will post the answers to them on the, our website, resfacil.msu.edu. Thank you very much for attending our coffee break. Thank you so much.